Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's news cycle. Specifically, we're gonna be discussing how long I think we're gonna to have to wait to start getting news on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Ever since it's revealed back in February, we haven't gotten any new trailers or any new updates, and usually Game Freak likes to wait two to three months, typically, before revealing new information. But for this hype cycle, I think it's gonna start a little bit sooner. That being said, let's jump right into things. Now, last year might have um, confused a couple people. The release cycle and hype cycle for Generation 8's latter half, Pokemon BDSP and Legends Arceus, was strange. Both games got revealed on Pokemon Day back in February of 2021, and we didn't get any substantial information about the games until June. That substantial information was the release date for BDSP. After that, it took until August to get any significant information for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, a game that was due out in November, and Legends Arceus. From August, things picked up steam and we started to get regular trailers and regular updates for the games. That is an exception. It usually doesn't take that long for Pokemon games to get brand new news and information. Now, to be fair, the spring months are usually the biggest gap between reveal and more reveals. It usually takes us a couple months, usually March and April, before we start getting new game information. And then in May, they typically will pick things up and start revealing games. Now, that is, of course, building on the fact that games get announced in February. There have been plenty of Pokemon games that have gotten announced later in the year in May and June, and then we really didn't have much of a delay between when we started getting new information and when the games were originally revealed. Oras was revealed either at the end of April or the beginning of May, sometime in that very specific time frame. And then soon thereafter, we started to get trailers and information. One of the first things we saw were the cinematics of Groudon and Kyogre coming out of the ground and unleashing their effects onto the world, whether it was uh, Groudon unleashing a drought or Kyogre unleashing a rainstorm. That was one of the first things we saw. It was on a uh, Japanese Nintendo or uh, Japanese Pokemon Sunday show back then. It was, it, it was, a, though that release cycle in 2014 was exciting. It was fun. X and Y was similar. We got the games revealed in January of 2013, and we didn't end up getting any new information until a couple months down the line. I want to say March or, or April. We started getting news and information for the most part. And then the summer, it really picked up. With Scarlet and Violet, we're in the bit of the lull period. We're not getting a ton of new information. We're not getting any news. We have the first trailer, and that's pretty much all we have to go off of. And for content creators who make Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos, only having one trailer to go off of for your background video is, uh, it's a little, it's a little rough. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's okay. You guys are here for the discussions for the most part. But my opinion I don't think we're going to have to wait as long for Scarlet and Violet news. I think the max amount of time we're going to have to wait for brand new substantial information is probably May. Do I think we could see a trailer in April? Yes, I do. I think that these games are further along than Legends Arceus and BDSP were at their reveal. I've said this constantly since the game was originally announced. With that being said, I think it's going to be sooner before they feel comfortable showing us more of these games. Now, could it be smaller things? Maybe a one minute trailer, maybe some tweets from Nintendo of America or some tweets from Nintendo's Jap Japanese account or Pokemon's Japanese account where they reveal some new bits of information. It's highly possible. Maybe we get clarification on release dates and things of that nature. It's also possible. Maybe we just see new ver new versions of things we've already gotten. More information on the starters, for example. I think that's all very possible. But I think April, May is when we're going to start to see that hype cycle machine turn back on. I don't think we're going to have to wait until August, like with BDSP and Legends Arceus, to hear anything brand new. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn the notification bell on so you never miss another upload. So as I mentioned, my prediction is April, May for when we're going to start to see news for these games come out. It's an interesting year because we have Legends Arceus still, and they could announce various content updates throughout the year, giving more stuff for the game, just like they did with the Daybreak update last month. And I think that's definitely going to happen. I don't think we've seen the last 
decently big update for Pokemon Legends Arceus, but it appears that the desire for DLC, like a full massive expansion that costs like $25, that doesn't seem like it's going to be happening. Will it happen for Scarlet and Violet? Who's to say, but most likely. So with that being said, there's nothing else for the Pokemon company to fill this year with except for Scarlet and Violet. Maybe something else gets announced, some sort of spin-off game. Maybe they're really pushing Pokemon Unite or some other spin-off game that they already have, but Scarlet and Violet is it. And for that reason, I think they're going to heavily push the hype cycle. That means talking about the new gimmick that we've seen on the Japanese logos, talking about evolutions and brand new Pokemon, brand new forms for whatever the name of this region is, uh, Spain, Spaniard forms uh, for, for the time being, while we don't have the name of the region, revealing the region and revealing various new areas, they're going to hit us with everything. If I had to take a guess, I think we're going to get a full Pokemon X and Y treatment for this reveal cycle. That means almost every other week, brand new trailers once we get into the summer with new Pokemon and new information, demos at E3 showing off the game, the whole works. The big gimmick being revealed and then that fueling more of the hype cycle. I think all of that is coming very, very soon. We're going to have to take about a month and a half of nothing. It's going to be rough. There's going to be a lack of topics. We're going to have to really comb the original trailer with a very, very fine toothed comb. That phrase did not exactly work the way I thought it did, but we'll move on. You're going to have to do all of that. We're going to be grasping at straws here for the next month and a half. But once we get past that, we're going to move into a cycle where we're going to have a ton to talk about. We're going to get to talk about the gimmicks and the new Pokemon and all of these things that the Pokemon company are going to reveal. Eventually, hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later, we're going to get to see the box art legendaries of Scarlet and Violet. And maybe that'll contribute to you deciding which game you're going to get. Right now, I'm leaning towards Violet, but... That could change on a dime, really. Scarlet and Violet, I like both colors. I, I don't dislike one incredibly strongly. There have been recent games where I've really disliked one and loved the other. Sword and Shield, for example, I loved Shield, but Sword just felt kind of bland and I wasn't really excited about the box art legendary or the logo or the coloration, any of that. So Shield was an easy choice for me. BDSP, Diamond was my childhood one, so I picked Diamond to play my first playthrough, which is actually to live stream on the channel. You should check that out. But all of that is coming, and I think it's coming sooner rather than later, and I think that's really good for the Pokemon community as a whole. I think it's really good that we're also probably going to start to get some information surrounding what the future of Pokemon looks like. I think it's going to, I think how they approach this cycle of Generation 9 is going to tell us a lot about their future plans. And the reason I say that is because we're approaching very quickly a thousand Pokemon in the Pokedex. Is Generation 9 going to be the gen that smashes that ceiling? Are we going to hit a thousand? We're over 900 right now. So they would have to add a significant number of Pokemon and a number of you know, decently higher than we've gotten in the last three generations. They would have to do something big for us to get that. What happens after Generation 9? What happens after a thousand Pokemon? These are questions that this release cycle and this game are going to answer. And it's going to be important things for us as a community to monitor because it's going to affect, you know, years into the future. It's going to affect what comes in 2023, what comes in 2024, 2025, eventually Generation 10, unless they do some sort of soft reboot. So this new cycle is going to be really interesting, and I hope you guys are going to stick with it on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any other Pokemon Scarlet and Violet discussions, and let's have that dialogue. With that being said, I've been Linky, we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.